She's the passive income expert, businesswoman, and a mom who has helped over 18,000 women generate wealth. Learn with Chelsea. Hey. 2024, everybody should be focused on multiple income streams. If you only have one income stream, it's too close to none. Yeah. I'm never going to teach and charge people something that I think is bullshit. Being able to free up your time to live life the way you want to live life, and it's attainable for everyone. It's just you need some education. I'm not really a fan of the dating process. Guys are tripping over cheesecake factory and coffee and- We should all go to cheesecake. I love cheesecake. We are, okay, all right, I'll take cheesecake, put me on. All right, so oh. are we gonna go? Whoa, I haven't gone one of these in a long time. Uh, oh, okay, <laughs> I'm not, okay. I'm this has been spicy. So spicy, that's for sure. <laughs> Welcome to the Auto Pursuit Podcast. We interview six, seven, eight, nine figure earners. Today we're back in Vegas. I feel like this is my remote, my remote location. Every time I'm in Vegas, I shoot here. It's always available. I love that. You know what I mean? They leave the door open for me. I love that. Come in and I kill it. And uh, today's episode, I have this amazing entrepreneur, businesswoman, mom, and somebody that's very, very inspirational. I've been following with her over a year, and it took about that time to get get here. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Which is fine, because I'm going to take full responsibility for that. Thank you. you know what I mean? Thank you, accountability. Um, learn with Chelsea. Hey, how are you doing? Nice here? to be here. Yeah. Finally meet you in person. I know. How's it been so far? It's been amazing. It's cool? Yeah. Are we besties? I, I, we're besties, and I'm we're, loving this day. I, I feel like we need a handshake. We are, okay, all right, I'll take this man. Put me on. All right, so oh, oh. Are we going to go? So Whoa, I haven't gone one of these in a long time. Uh, oh, okay. So I'm not okay. <laughs> I'm not coordinated enough. Okay, all right. So cool. Just follow me. Go up, down, like that. Boom. Oh, there's oh. more. Oh, wow. Okay, we're gonna we work on it. Yeah, we're going to work on it. Next time we see each other, we got to be gotta swift with you know what it. Got it. So maybe you could practice with Sydney. I'll definitely be doing that for right, sure. Cool. Yeah. Okay, definitely. so 2023, let's talk about that real quick. How how amazing was this year? What are some things that you're excited about that you were able to accomplish? People that wow. you were able to impact? What are some things maybe you didn't get a chance to get to mm. that you're going to make sure you take care of in the first quarter? That's a great question. 2023 for me was different in a lot of ways. Um, so I ended a seven year relationship, two year engagement last December. So mm. it's officially been a year. And so 2023 was a full year of being single for the first time in seven years with two kids. So um, the year started off super rough. And for the first time in seven years of being a businesswoman, I was forced to like come to a screeching halt in my business. Mm. And I just wasn't prepared. I didn't, it didn't even cross my mind that my work would be affected when I decided to separate. Um, and so it was just like, whoa, fish out of water. Like I can't focus on business right now. I have to focus on being a full-time mom to my kids who are completely confused about what's going on yeah. while I'm also confused about what the hell's going on with my life. And so the first half of the year was dedicated to like getting my new house situated. It happened um, like two months after I moved into a brand new house, mm. um, had to furnish it. Had It was like a lot. Had to start over. I had to start completely over. And so, yeah, first time in seven years that my focus wasn't on you know, the growth and yeah. the scaling of my business. And so a lot of mindset shifts had to take place because I really wasn't ready to slow down at all. I'm very much in love with entrepreneurship and everything I've created. So um, just having to accept that like this year isn't going to be all about the money or isn't going to be all about growing and seeing what crazy numbers I could hit. Like this year is about turning inward and making sure I'm okay. My kids are okay. The foundation is okay. Making sure my home is secure and just my kids are in school and just like being a real mom, yeah, yeah. you know, um, I didn't have that partnership aspect anymore. I didn't have anybody else checking for us and making sure we're okay. It's like, it's just me and my kids now for real. So um, lots of mental shifts had to take place, but I, what I've accomplished, um, I think in within the first six months, I made it really clear to my team, like, listen, y'all are all still here. We all still have a job to do. Like we're still on a mission, but I'm mentally checked the fuck out right now. Like it's about me and my kids right now. And if you guys want jobs, I need y'all to really step up and like help me. Cause for years I've been doing this mm. as the leader, but this time I need y'all to like really step up because I'm not okay right this second. Uh, so let, let, let's talk about that real quick. Cause there's two things that, that, that you mentioned that, that kind of uh, stand out for me. So number one is, I mean, you teach thousands of people about like, passive income, yeah. how to get money mm -hmm. without having to actively work for it all the time. Yeah. So when you had to 
halt your business, you still had cash coming in. For sure. Right. Yeah, you was able to do that because it's things that you put in place. God. Right. So so let's talk about that real quick. Yeah. So what did it feel like being able to have the opportunity to actually pull back on the business without fear of income, you know, fully stopping? Because for a lot of people, when they go through things when they, like this, when they, it takes them under. Yeah, and like if you stop Ooh. moving, no money's coming in. No money comes in. You know, so what was what what did that feel like knowing that you had that confidence to do that? Maybe maybe some things were a little bit active, but you will still have money coming in. It's honestly, it's been the biggest blessing, and I talk about it all the time. And on the days that where I was able to like push through and show up and like talk about things, it's because that's what I had in mind that the majority of women that were in my situation or are in my situation do not have it that way because of things that they chose not to do or, mm. you know what I mean? Not to learn, not to invest in and, or maybe getting too comfortable in their situation and thinking it would last forever and things would just be sweet forever. You know what I mean? But I was very, very grateful that I had my business to fall back on. And that has been my full on support system. Yeah. I'm grateful for passive income. I'm grateful for the ability to be able to make money on days where I mentally just don't have the ability to show up, you know, because if I had a job, I would damn sure have called out. I wouldn't have a job no more yeah. because they the, you go, there were days I yeah. didn't even want to shower. I didn't even want to get out of bed. It's called the nanny to have somebody else do it. Like, I can't do it right now. You know what I mean? Like, I could barely show up for myself. So to show up to a job, never. So you're saying you're saying you could barely show for yourself on certain days is it because emotionally you just, yeah what, it was just hard it was just so hard like in the very i'm I, okay so i didn't give myself much time to like dwell in this situation at all because i understand like i have a whole team depending on me and like i got kids depending on me yeah. you know what i'm saying so um it was a probably a solid two weeks okay. you know that i was really just like not okay and just like just um i'm gonna be in my room y'all like i don't care like y'all figure it out but i told them i was like i'm not checking numbers like all year this was not a, a year about growth it was just a year of maintaining it was about growth but it was inside it, yeah just yeah. a different type of business yeah. you know as far as my team normally we're just they know me to be very very numbers driven very mm -hmm. goal driven and this year they just noticed very quickly like there's an internal growth shift happening and so i told them i deleted the apps the shopify app i deleted everything stripe from my phone i was i got a, a personal and a business line and i kept it very much separate for for a while you know and like i didn't want to hear the cha-chings all day. I didn't yeah. want to be clocking my goals all day and my numbers all day. Just, I had my assistant run the totals every night and just like, tell me what we did. And I'm like, cool, cool, cool. I was at a point in time where if we weren't making three to 6,000 a day. I'm furious. I'm walking around mad. I'm not okay. Like, don't talk to me. You didn't do your job. Like, you know, and it wasn't like that this year at all. This is the first year that I was like, it's not about that, you know, like I just wanted to maintain, but I'm so happy because I just had a call, a call with my accountant maybe two weeks ago. And um, we're like 30,000 shy of a million this year. There you go. You like, still got some days. How the fuck did we do that? Yeah. I'm so proud of us. Like, honestly, like, because when I tell you I did not check, num I'm normally one of the people that are fanatical refresh refresh like i want to see the numbers every mm -hmm. day and this year i just it was the furthest thing from my mind i as long as i ha could pay everybody i knew yeah. what was coming in obviously i knew money was coming in because i'm still paying everybody and bills and stuff so i know we're working and we're what we're doing is working but i wasn't so numbers driven to where that was my main focus this year and it showed because i was able to heal i was able to take care of myself so I'm looking the at way it, i did it learn with Chelsea yeah yeah yeah. yeah, and I mean, I'm a work in progress. Don't get me wrong. I'm learning. Like, I'm adjusting to some of the things that I, I've normalized for a long time that I didn't even know were wrong or not wrong, but, you know, were not for me. Things yeah. that I convinced myself were for me. And now I'm realizing, like, oh, damn, like, I didn't actually like that. And I don't ever want to deal with that again. I just, you only know what you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think sometimes when you're in a situation for a long time, you kind of have those blinders on and you you don't realize that there's anything outside of that that might suit you better. So you what know? what were some of the um, passive income streams that you had coming in uh, while you were checked out for the year? Um, I think the main one is digital marketing. Okay. For sure. So my company is um, HG Marketing LLC, and we create info programs for people who want to learn how to make money online. That's my niche. So um, I have a whole bunch of different offerings from mentorships to um, 
ebooks and just digital programs that you can purchase and don't really need my help with at all. So that's really what kept me like kept the year super solid is that I, you know, my programs are set up to once you purchase them, like you're good. You can start to learn right away. And thank God, because if I had to actually do a job and show up every single day, this year wasn't going to be that year. Do you feel like people um, need digital products? Like everyone should have a digital product? Oh, 100%. Like everybody? Everyone. Yeah. Everyone should have at least a, one. Day. And it only takes one product to completely change your life. Like you don't need a whole bunch of offerings. You don't need a whole catalog. You just need one solid program that you can really fixate on and market and really just, you know, create that brand authority around and you can really just run it up. Is there a certain uh, type of digital product you feel like is common or people should should definitely have? Um, I think it just depends on like where you're at with it. Some people have you know, people are into different things. Like I talked to a lot of girls who are into lashes and for them, it's like, oh, well, let me do a training. Let mm. me charge for a tutorial. Let me make up artist. Oh, you know, let me teach a virtual class or in-person class, you know, stuff like that. And then there's people, some people want to do the ebook route. I do it all. Yeah. Like, so I personally, it's just like, however much you plan on showing up for your audience, I think that that's pretty a relevant question that everybody should kind of ask themselves from the beginning. Like, do you want to have to, engage with your audience you want to be teaching live classes how much do you actually want to have to show up for your offer and if you really rather not then ebooks is probably the way to go because somebody right, so spends 15 20 dollars they get their ebook and no other support is needed so know? if they get this ebook um how are they selling it like how they get in the traffic for how they how they get the word out about the, uh, about um, the ebook? well there's like you know there's people that want to rely on organic methods of marketing um and that just means a lot of sweat equity you know that means content creation like the big monster in the room people freak out about content i'm like i love con content get me paid yeah. so, um i don't see the hassle it's like the hassle for me was getting up and getting dressed and getting in my car and sitting in traffic no to go clock in somewhere yeah. like that's a hassle me pressing record on my phone mm to just show anything, like yeah. anything. You literally just show anything and put some words over it and that's content and people complain. It, it just, it's insane to me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Digital products is easy. Like everybody should have a digital product. Like in traffic, you can organically traffic and create content on social media that you post, you know, a few times a day and let the algorithm do its thing and get you those organic views and you learn how to nurture those leads as they come in. Um, or you put money behind your brand and you advertise, mm. you put ad, spend, ad dollars behind your brand. And I'm a super fan of that because it's like. I'm trying to run it up. You don't get exposure faster yeah, that way. Yeah, I don't have time to see and grow no organic following. Like we're gonna do that regardless. Yeah, but, facts. You know, I'm trying to try and get to the get get to the paper. <laughs> so another thing you mentioned also was uh that that helped you during this year of uh, focusing on yourself mm -hmm. is having a team. Yes. So 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 let's talk about the team. What what are some of the essential positions one would need to hire for or have filled so they can run a a, a, a team even even if they're just starting. Uh, um, what, are some, what are some key positions? The first position I had was a VA, which is a virtual assistant. So um, at the time, like I was making money, but it wasn't enough to like really have like an in-house team or have nobody like move out for me or like come be local or anything like that. So I had a VA for years, like maybe four years. And for the longest, it was just me and him holding it just down, rocking out. rocking out. And we grew together. We learned together. And it was more like admin assistance, like anything that I needed help with from email, responding to emails, to fulfilling orders on Shopify, to, you know, customer support emails, to just anything that you can need operation wise. I'm not a tech person. So even though I made millions of dollars online, like people, when they meet me in person, they see how like illiterate I am, like <laughs> Cindy will tell you. Well, I, you, don't, you don't seem very literate right now. Do we need to pull out something to read? We need to have a research. Uh, I mean, I can read now, can read? but I'm, I'm not tech savvy. At all. <laughs> so that's what like, you I can read yeah. now sending an email or like cleaning out my inbox, like anything, you know. <laughs> I'm just not a tech person, yeah. but um, so my team, I rely on to be smarter than yeah, me. Yeah, which the is what, that yeah, they're that makes supposed sense. to be smarter than yeah. me, you know. So um, my VA held it down for a long time. And then as soon as I could afford it, I wanted to have a local team, like, mm. you know, more in-house. Um, it got cool. It, like initially it was cool 
talking to everybody on Zoom. But then after a while, it's like, I want to have meetings in person. I want to be able to like connect and grow in real life with my team. So I had my um, an assistant, like my executive assistant. She hold that's my right hand. She got a VA, you got an executive assistant. Well, I graduated from having a VA to now having oh, an so in person. So executive assistant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she works out of my home office with me okay, every gotcha. day. That's my yeah. right hand. Like we do everything together. And then um, I no longer have a personal assistant, but that's definitely um, a role that I appreciated tremendously. Um, but uh, yeah, I having somebody fill that role is not an easy task. Yeah. That's like an extension of me. Of you, for, yeah, and yeah. I mean, my executive assistant is already that, but my personal is just like we together all the time. So it's a lot. Not everybody's ready to like really built like I'm built like my personal assistant is damn near like a mini me it's not really easy to work for me I'm not gonna lie mm -hmm. it's not but if you can rock it out like it we going to the moon so it's like yeah, yeah, they so, all know that so it's worth it then it's definitely yeah, yeah, worth, it's it. worth it it's definitely in my opinion yeah. I don't know is it worth it let me know city is it worth it <laughs> so it's, it's you know I've gone through crazy people yeah it's it hiring has not been fun yeah, yeah. growing yeah. a team has not been fun I'm very grateful for my team now you know what I'm saying like I really I love them I I really value and cherish them because we've had people come in and really try to come with bad intentions like from day one like inside of the business? everybody yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like just plotting from day one and it's yeah you learn the hard way you know now we got lawyers on deck but you got to learn you, you got to go through things like that mm -hmm. to protect and so i'm grateful i went through those experiences because now our shit's rock solid like, so, so what are some of those things that you learned the hard way or that you learned uh, and you had to shield yourself from moving forward is that like you, i'm naturally like a really trusting person so you trust me nah not yet damn not yet. <laughs> Thought you was not to be trusted. I, I've, I've learned. I told you I learned oh, from so this you, scenario. Damn. So now I'm trying to be a little bit more guarded, a little bit more like show and prove. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like I'm one of them bosses that like you come to me with like an issue. I mean, I'm a problem solver, you know? And so you got to be careful with that though. Like me, I don't do too much. It's like, what's the problem? How can I fix it? I got you. Da, 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 da. Yep. And sometimes, you know, the wrong person with the wrong intentions, if they see that you're like that, you just never know what that could breed. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And in that situation, that's exactly what it was like she came in with a situation that I didn't really know about or like a financial stress I didn't know about initially and by the time I found out I was already so in love with her work mm. and just like the relationship the rapport the like what she was doing for me and I was just like yo you could have whatever <laughs> like the way you showing up in my life like you could really have whatever and so that made you vulnerable it, it did it's I, I'm an acts of service person if you yeah. come in my life trying to fix some shit it's like you you're making my life easier. I want to make your life easier, you know? And that mindset, it's like you want to be able to have that mindset because, you know, you want to be able to reciprocate when someone shows up and they do 110% for you. You know what I'm saying? When you find out that their car's breaking down, I'm like, let's go to the lot real mm. quick. It's just like common sense. It's yeah. like if you look out for me and I know your car is breaking down, I need you to get to work, let's go. That's all, and that's all it should be. You, you would think yeah. until you find out that, you know, People does not. People be people in. People be people in. Yeah, yeah. And you can't, I gotta, so now, you know, I got gatekeepers now. You know what I'm saying? Like my team be like, that, that, that. You know? So you got some people, you got some people that they yeah. gotta go through. And at first they... I really thought, I'm like, yeah, y'all hating on the new girl. Y'all, why y'all like, <laughs> this one is a savage, first of all. Oh my God. It's like, shout out to Sydney like, over there. Sydney. Shout out to Sydney. I'm like, we're at fucking team dinner. Be nice. They're new. It's like you gotta like they're the ones like you gotta yeah. show and prove because they put in work like you can't you anybody join the team now shit's sweet for anybody now yeah. it's like we got things laid out we we're gonna tell you how to do your job it's like you don't have to figure anything out we know what works what doesn't work you just gotta come execute it gotcha. you know yeah. but they we have built that over years so they be hazing people I don't know I'm nice I'm hi welcome they're like mm, how long are you gonna be here what you coming to do I could do that <laughs> so so how does someone that's um. Uh, maybe gone through one of your programs or might be watching this or listening to this. How do they go from like their first digital product to building like a business around it? You know what I mean? Instead of just being like a someone that just maybe I'm a solopreneur and I just oh, I learned this thing from Chelsea online. Now I have my first digital product. I'm selling it, but I want to build a business around it. How do I now put my team together or um, you know start yeah, you create get... a consistent passive income so now I can move around like Chelsea? Like how do I take that one product and turn it into a business. 
Um, I feel like you got to just think big from day one. You know, you got to think big from day one and really just 10x your efforts. Like if you really want to grow and you want to scale anything you're doing, like whatever you did last year, just 10x that. And that's so you're talking really about in terms of like effort, activity? Yep. yep. Yeah. Output, period. Like whatever you did in one year, whatever you did that you knew worked, just 10x that if you are trying to truly 10x your results. And when you do that, everything is just going to grow at the same time. And you're going to like you're going to need help. You're mm. going to need to build a team. You're going to need to outsource and delegate certain things, you know, Um more output means more input eventually. What's up, y'all? Listen, if you are a business owner or entrepreneur and you juggling your email, your text messages, you don't have a CRM, you don't have any automation, you don't even have your social media posts scheduled, I have the solution for you. What you wanna do is tap into the lead attraction system. This is an all-in-one system that's gonna handle your text messaging, your email, your CRM, your invoices, get you paid, your digital products, your memberships, your courses, your funnels, and also it's an all-in-one solution. So you can get rid of all these other things. It's in one system. You pay one price every single month and they also have a weekly office hours. So I don't know what you're waiting for. Tap into the platform and make sure that you grow your business. Lead attraction system. Grab the link below. Let's go. Where did you learn that from? We'll learn what? Just just that, that, that simple formula. Damn. Reading and mentorship, one just, of, just mentor, your own A mentor thing. actually, because one of my- Because it seems so simple, but a lot of people don't do it. One of my mentors, um, I asked her, um, she's a digital cor course creator and she, her name is, shout out to Danielle Leslie. She oh, yeah, has her. a course yeah. that teaches you how to do a course. And so she's the first person that's the course that I took um, to learn how to, I, I knew I had a skill. I knew I knew something. I just didn't know how to get it out to the world and put, package it up, make it look good and sound nice and all that. So I took her program and it taught me how to package up my offer, which was a drop shipping offer. And so um, when uh, when she saw my results, like we we made, we sold thirty seven thousand dollars of my first digital product before it was done, mm. before it was complete. And so I was one of her case studies. Like she talks about me in her webinars. She talks about me on her her stuff, you know. And so when we had our case, when we had our conversation about it, I asked her, I'm like, it was, she told me she's like your results from year one to year two type is, is bigger than what her growth initially was. And she's like, but her next year, she went from, I can't remember her actual numbers. It was like 400,000 to like 2.7 mil, something crazy, like a yeah. crazy leap. I haven't had no leaps like that. Like my shit's been pretty consistent. Like we just gradually, I never had like a this year and then all of a sudden a crazy. So I asked her, I'm like, well, what took you from 400 to whatever, seven mil, something crazy that it was. And she's like, I just 10 X everything that I was doing. I, if I spent, you know, a hundred dollars on ads, I was going to spend it. That. Like she's literally 10 Xing everything because it was working when you're just showing to yourself and your business to a smaller oh, audience. Yeah. So just 10 X it. And I'm like, that's it. And she's like, literally, that's it. Everything that I did, I just 10 X it. And so she said it one time and I was just like, bet it. Like call the, t we're 10 Xing everything. Mm. You post three times a day. Guess what? Posted six. Yes. And what do we do what? that year? We posted 10. Yeah. Like we were not fucking around. Like post during the day. Guess what? We're posting at night. Like mm -hmm. everything we're doing, we are about to be in their faces. They're about to be sick of us. We went from just Facebook ads to Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Pinterest, TikTok, Google, Instagram, and not Instagram, influencers. Like we hit them on every, talk about omnipresence, that's us. You about to be sick of us. That's exact, I say it all the time because it's like, you're gonna see me everywhere. When you close your eyes, you're gonna be hearing learn with Chelsea, that's the goal. And that's what we did, like we went everywhere. And so, you know, we did a million in six months that year when we decided to like 10X everything. And I lost my Instagram, brand new Instagram, started with zero followers came back and did it a million. So what, what would you say one of the biggest lessons you learned on that, that time period? Because you kind of went in it with, with that 10x intention. So in that short time period, what, what are some of the things that you learned? Follow the blueprint, stick to the script. It's out there. Like I knew my framework worked. Like I teach this stuff, you know what I'm saying? But not everybody wants it the mm. same way. You know, like the framework, I'm never going to teach and charge people something that I think is bullshit or I know for a fact doesn't, you know, that I don't can't stand and vouch that it works. Like it works. When I lost my Instagram, I was sick. I was depressed. I was 
I felt like I was done for. I had just had my son. Mm. I was making 50K a month from my social media. And all of a sudden I woke up to that just said disabled. I really felt like, oh my God, this is death, <laughs> death. And then I was like, wait, after two weeks of crying about my brand name. You're like, I could do it again. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck am I tripping for? I do this. Like I build Shopify brands. I build e-commerce brands. Like, what are we talking about? Like, I was more sad, I think about like the emotional, like my kid, my pictures. I just felt like, oh my God, I have no identity anymore. I really lost, I felt like I lost my identity because Honey Gold was my brand name. It's on my car. Like Honey Gold is such a big part of my brand story. And then I got pretty much, once I got hacked, I could not use that name anywhere. Oh, you couldn't even use a brand name so on, that's on social i mean yeah. on instagram yeah because it kept so somebody still has it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well actually I, I don't even know i can't even search it like i'm oh, blind it's, it's like yeah. yeah so once that happened i really felt like i had to find myself again like it, i i understood i had to rebrand but i wasn't ready to rebrand same mm -hmm. with like the breakup it's like i wasn't ready to have things come to a halt to where now i have to be this i have to like redevelop who i am publicly i was like what the fuck? like I who, if you just, if somebody just took right in from you right now, it's like, do you come back as a podcaster? Do you come back as a this or that? It's well, like, I'm actually yeah. not, I, I'm really considering changing my name next year. So we're about to see. To what? Um, I got a couple of things floating. The reason why, the reason why I'm considering is because I started learning more about like family legacy, mm. right? And my last name, I don't have any like connection with it. Well, first of all, my last name is a slave last name. Okay. That's number one. Mm. Number two, I didn't know my dad. Mm. My, my, me and my grandfather, before he passed away, we almost got into like a huge fight. And then prior to that, he just kind of abandoned my mom and me. He just moved to a whole other state, new family, never connected to family. I was okay. taking care of his mom, which is my great grandma, because he just, you know, so I don't really have any, you know, we yeah. don't have any core values, we have family values, no trust, no oh, crest, no oh. colors, no nothing. So I'm not, I'm not really attached to it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you know Makes what? Sense. I might want to rebrand, re like literally re Me. start over this. You know? when it's over. I what? like that. And then when I'm, you know, when I'm married or when I'm in a relationship, the name that I have, it's like, it can stand for something. I love it. You know, cause it's, it's like what I'm creating it to be. Yeah. So yeah, so, I'm, so I'm, I'm, that's where I'm at with it. I love that. Yeah. Well, go ahead and change it then. You know, you know so you can say, go ahead, so go ahead and take Brendan. Go ahead and take him. I got a backup plan. I got the contingency Seriously, oh, please don't, don't, don't well, he's joking. <laughs> He, listen, not until you're ready, okay? I'm serious, because that's exactly what I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. jokingly, and mm -hmm. the next day. It was gone. It was gone. Uh, so there's so much. He's joking, uh, guys. I put a couple of. <laughs> Disclaimer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just joking. <laughs> no, but. What do you want to accomplish next year? What's, what's, what's top of the chart? Um, so I launched a new digital product. And I'm all about like challenging myself. Okay. So every year, the minimum for my company is like the standard. We have to make a million dollars. Like this year was kind of the exception just because of obvious reasons. And, and you, you're pretty much there anyway. Yeah. And and that, yeah, exactly. And that worked out. So that's cool. We all get to see another day. We all get yeah. to live to see another day. Uh, but next year is back to business. Okay. Next year is back to business. So we're on a, um, we're going to kind of be documenting the journey to a million dollars. I love that. I, yeah. I, I um I got that from who's who's the last person I seen do it? Uh what's the name? A guy Atlanta or a girl. girl. Okay, no. Hmm. Comedian, entertainer. Oh, B Small? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I watched hers. Okay, yeah. what she documented her journey to a million? Yeah. Oh, did she? Yeah, a couple years ago. Oh yeah. well damn. Yeah. Might have the tune in. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was doing she was doing hair, she was doing like all the things she was doing at the time. Mm -hmm. She was just doing it all. I love um, that. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. I think, oh, oh, shell oh God. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. You get, you getting better. She getting, she getting better. Lead the way. I'm just, you know, going the most. <laughs> All right. So you're gonna, uh, you're gonna document to a million. Yep. Right. With what one digital product? With one digital brand product. Offer. Yeah. What, what's the uh, price point of this one? Um, four hundred. Okay. Super so three ninety seven. Super light. So what's 400. the number? So so to get to a million with this one, it's four hundred. So how many do you need? A lot. I don't know. We're just going at it. What's the map, Cindy? I don't know. How many? How many? How many of this? This three ninety seven does she need to sell to get to her head? Well, why three ninety seven? Did you say three ninety four? Oh, I said four hundred. My fault. Okay, so you need twenty five hundred. That's nothing. Or four hundred to to get to the M. That's light. So you're gonna do the same, the same format but you're just gonna document this yeah so i've done it in the past with programs that cost anywhere from two to five thousand mm. 
And so obviously much bigger price point, yeah. but I'm adapting to the economy and to like what's obviously been going on. And so yeah. I'm like, you know, let me meet my audience where they're at I like it. so that there's like no it. rebuttals, gave me an challenges. Too. I'm like, you know, a small 400 is yeah. not going to break the bank mm -mm. and it's going to allow you to start generating money right away, yeah, fact. which is more than what I was able to offer with my previous programs that are more long term. They're mm. mentorships, they're eight weeks, yeah, there's yeah. time. So they're going to get like a whole, is it a program? Is it an ebook? What is it? It's a, it's an MRR product. So okay. it's the program that comes with master resale rights, which is just a freaking no brainer because yeah, the minute super. you buy it, you, you can, can resell, resell it. it. Yeah. So it's like I'm coming from the world of selling physical products where we have to do a lot of product research, a lot of, you know, just a, there's a lot more variables mm. to having longevity and scalability with a product and yeah. offer. Now it's all digital, 100% profit. And because you can resell it same day, it takes out the guesswork of, is this going to be a winning product? Yes, it's a winning product. Just resell it. Start marketing yeah, right now. 100%. Right now. You make one sale, you make your money back. All right, let's do it. Oh, oh God. Again. What? what? Wait, 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 wait. Come on. Come on. I got too much on my Come brain. On. I remember handshakes. What now? This? This? <laughs> what is it? Hold on. Hold on. Oh. Listen, you did. Oh, relax. Calm down. I don't okay. remember. My memory is okay. shot. Bring it oh, on. my. Uh, now what? Pound uh, it? Uh, uh, oh, gosh. Okay. Seem like more that's, steps this that's time. That's because I love the idea. I think they can learn a lot from that. So they can what? buy it. What part? What idea? The, the oh, the, oh, yeah. That's yeah. a no so That's, that's can, a no brainer. Spin four on it. They got the master reselling rights. So they can just resell it one time. Get their money back. Yeah, I have students that are like, Chelsea, I got my store up in 15 minutes. I made two sales the same day I bought it. I'm like, well, God dang it. Like... That's He's like, a, who's the winner, me or you? We both win it. Everybody, yeah, everybody win it. Period. Like, you just got to believe in yourself. You know, just getting over that initial hump. People yeah. are just so scary right now. And I get it. There's a lot of riffraff out there. There's a lot of... It's hard to tell. What's... So you're going to document that on uh, what, what platforms? So we're starting a podcast. And okay. so my goal is to shoot three times a week. And one of the days, the episode be dedicated to the journey okay got you so what worked this week what me and my team focused on I this like week, that. what fires we had to put out this mm -hmm. week what didn't work what did we have to re you know reassess revamp how much money actually came in that week with mm -hmm. the, this new program this new product so i'm putting all my other programs on the back burner and I'm, just focus I'm on this purposely one? showing people yeah. that this could be done with one single like program it. and so i'm just going all in and documenting the journey and that episode for the podcast weekly will be dedicated to that journey. What was the name? Could, could we say the name of the podcast? You want to hold back? Uh, I haven't quite announced it yet, but I'll say it. Okay, let them know. Okay. Let them know. Talk, talk, talk right there, right there. Okay, y'all ready for this? So it's going to be no money, no honey. Ooh. I like it. I like it. All right. Okay, yeah. so my brand before it got hacked was Honey Gold. So everything in my life was honey, 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 honey. Get money with honey. All the, everything. Honey Glow was my body butter collection. Everything is just honey related, right? So Instead of it being N O, like no money, no honey, it's gonna be K N O W. I like it. No money, no me, no honey. I like you know? it. So it'll be three days a week, and one of the days is gonna be dedicated to more of my personal, like yeah. dating mom, mm -hmm. personal. The other one will be the documenting of to the million, and then the third one is gonna be a collab with my homegirl, who's a chef out here, mm. and we're gonna have like a eating segment where we either like talk over food or we cook and talk or something where we get catering and we review it, something like that. But it'll be like a food component on the third day. All right, so basically you're saying that uh, if they don't have no money, there's they can't have no honey, basically. No, that would be N O. This is K N O. Oh, I know what I know what that is, but I'm that's saying that's what I'm saying. No, that's what we talk about. It's no, no, <laughs> not much. No, but let's be clear. Yeah. No money, no honey. Yes. To answer your question, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. accurate as well. Got you. So 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 with dating now, no money. Oh, no money. I had a feeling that's where we're going with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that part. So so is that a goal in 2024? What dating? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the goal. Is it? Mm -hmm. what, what, how big is that goal? It's, it's to be dating. Mm. Dating, I don't think it was ever the goal. Honestly, dating is not the goal. Marriage is the goal. Marriage Family is the goal. Is the goal. Yeah. Partnership is the goal. You know, unfortunately, I have to do some dating to get there. No, you have to. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I'm not really a fan of the dating process. Nah, uh, why not? It's just rough out here. It's how's it? Wild. How's it? Okay, how's it rough for? How's it rough for women? It's I, wild. How, how do you feel like it's rough for women versus? 
it being rough for men? We just get approached by so we have a lot of options. Options, I guess. And um I don't know, like I'm a woman with a lot to lose. Like mm. I have a lot going on. So it's just hard to tell people's intentions. It's just hard to kind of decipher between what's what. And, you know, my mom now, I'm not just dating for myself and for yeah. my own fun and pleasure. It's just like, no, there's like, this is important from day one. It matters. Do you have a, do you have like a, is it like an intro process? An intro process? Yeah, so like, like if you meet, me? yeah, so if like you, a betting process? Yeah. <laughs> the gatekeepers are the betting process. You know, Honestly, I just let people do them and I kind of just make my own assessments, my own mental assessments, and then kind of either just remove myself from the situation or determine if it's worth kind of growing and developing and seeing what's what. But mm, I've learned a lot this year. So what are some things you learned? Hmm. What are some things that you learned Ooh. from like, I guess, dating in 2023 where in 2024, maybe you're not going to make the same decisions? I would say. Mm. Or you know not to do certain things, or maybe you did learn so oh, you know, I think this, I just I need to be I need to be even more guarded than what I was. So I you think. feel like you need to be more guarded. Yeah, I do. What's that look like? I don't know, because I already don't be outside. I'm already guard it's just like I have to be more guarded because like I don't know. There guys have different intentions now. It's just weird. Like the things that so I'm used to guys always being so worried about like gold digger this go like worried about the woman's intentions. Yeah. But now that I have my own, I've just realized that there's a lot of men out here with bad intentions. There's yeah. a lot of men that are attracted to me because of what I have. And that was that's new for me because bef when I wasn't before I um before this leg of dating, I, it's like I was in a committed relationship for seven years before that I, I didn't have no money. So mm. dating, my objectives were different back then. I didn't have kids. It's just like the things that I cared about were different back then, you know. Now I'm coming into all types of different people and their motives are just sometimes it's clout. Sometimes you, you're interested in me because I got some followers. It's just like, it's just corny. And, and that goes over my, like, in my mind, it's like, I couldn't even imagine that. But it be, it's real. Uh, so we have, to, so we have to talk about that. It's real. Like yeah. people, it's, and it comes, I've just learned that like, you know, these high value men that people like we, we tend to glorify a lot on social media, the people that, you know, portray to have it all figured out and develop so, or invest so much into their development to get to where they are. I feel like I was under the the assumption that like, wow, this person's successful. We're on the same level. I know I've done a lot of inner work. I know I've done a lot of business development as well. And I assume that because they're at a certain that level they have as well. that they have as well. And I had to learn. was the case. Had to learn that the hard way. You need to be perpetrating that. Here. So the, money, the money doesn't mean. The, I didn't know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm used to dating people who, you know, really lacked, like, people who get street money is what I was yeah. used to. So I was really attracted. I was very excited to start to, to, start dating Shift. people with a different and mindset might be different. yeah and yeah. so i'm like oh the entrepreneurs like we're gonna be you know yeah. it's that, gonna, that's what i thought too you know uh, yeah. mm -mm. dating for me you hasn't know, been it hasn't been sickles. easy as well i feel like no. different what, what you struggling yeah. with what, 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 what have you noticed <laughs> what have what haven't i noticed what's up y'all i'm standing in the middle of the street and i'm willing to risk it all because i want you to grow whether through paid or organic measures over the next five days the audience growth challenge we're going to be teaching you podcast guesting strategies video marketing strategy social media predictable viral creation strategies the power of radio and digital pr and these strategies are what you need to grow your business over the next four six nine even 12 months to skyrocket your success so if you want to join the challenge all you got to do is click the link below and join the audience growth challenge and join as a vip let's get it so marriage is scary i'm i'm a little i'm a little petrified a little bit it's but i do want to get married okay that's good i do want to get married but i am a little nervous i ain't gonna lie mm -hmm. why what makes you nervous because i feel like it puts you in a very vulnerable position it does it puts you in a very vulnerable position right you don't know all right so let's say again i'm gonna use your example okay. let's say we just met mm -hmm. things is rolling a year in two years in feeling good we gonna take it there. Mm -hmm. It's only been a small amount of time. Mm -hmm. I've had friends I've known like decades longer than I know you, right? Right. So because we're spending so much time together and, and emotions is there, things are speeding up. 
You know, mm -hmm. we, we both want the same thing, mm -hmm. it looks like. So boom, now we're in the space. Mm -hmm. I don't really know you that well, technically. Right. I know you well, but I don't, I, so it's only been two years. Like whatever. how much can you prove, like how much exactly, can you go right? through, you know what I mean? Yeah. So now I'm like, I want that, right? So we're in a vulnerable position. Are we getting prenups? Depends. So we getting prenups, right? So we getting prenups or postnups or whatever. We got to we gotta protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pro that. Okay. Yeah, I'm pro that. So whatever you're coming with, coming in with, I feel like you should leave with. You should leave. You, you, you should be. That's, yeah. Right. Because that didn't involve me. Mm -hmm. Same thing with me. That's how I feel. Right. And then whatever we build, mm -hmm. we can hopefully we're not arguing or whatever. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. that should be on the table because when people break up, they get vindictive. There's all these other things. Yeah. All, all uh, terrier motives and yeah. You know, shit gets ugly. Right. So without that, I feel like. People go broke. They go bankrupt. You yeah. got to start all like over. Life over. Right? It, it, yeah. It's like, it can put it can put you in a very depressed, yeah. you know, um, place. Yeah. And then it's like, you're left with bills. Yeah. You know, like, if you're not. No, I agree. I just wanted so to make sure that was your Yeah. yeah. So, 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 so it, it, you know, it, it, it can put you in a very compromising position. So I do feel like things need to be safeguarded and protected, put in mm -hmm. trust, you know what I'm saying? Like having great conversations, mm -hmm. outlining if that was to happen, this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That would make me feel better. Yeah. But I feel like it's tough to know someone and the divorce like percentage is so high. So it's like we're in an environment and you it's like I can't share how I feel with friends that aren't married because mm -hmm. they're going to be talking to me. And they have no idea, from a different yeah. perspective, they've never been married, so they're giving me some advice that don't even okay. make sense. Of course. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, is is and we talked about dating early, earlier. It's rough. R right? A little bit? Right? We were rough. About, yes, we were talking about it. Right? Got so, it. so. <laughs> no, you know? I know. I mean, it's scary. Marriage is forever. Oh, yeah. People change. And people, people get give comfortable. Up. They, yeah, they give people, people we give, give up. up. Yeah. It's the comfortable for me, though. For me, I think getting too comfortable yeah. is like a big is a big no no. Like you should always be trying to really grow and yeah. learn and relearn your person. You know, we're always evolving, and so you can't expect things to stay the same for both parties at all times. But you have to kind of just be continue to fall in love with each other and get to know each other. You know, grow what, what with is each other, a, not apart. What is something that you feel would be ideal in a potential husband? Like, what are some fundamental things you you um, would need him to have? Major ambition and drive, because I make people feel a type of way if they don't have extreme level of drive and ambition. I feel like you're someone that can inspire. Yeah. You like, but I can also yeah. cripple somebody, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can also, like, make somebody feel really insecure. Because my, my it's not even my drive, but, like, my consistency mm. is like top notch. You know what I'm saying? Like whether it's a good day, a bad day, like we show up, you know, at, at least me or my team, whatever, yeah. but same thing. So for a guy who's not focused enough or not, you know, on his shit enough, you're, you're not, you're gonna realize that dealing with me. And I don't even have to say anything. I might not even know it, but I, you know, I, that comes back to me a lot. Like, damn, you make me have, I have to step my shit up. Yeah, you do. Bugging with me, you ain't got no choice. Yeah, and it should be like that both yeah, ways. I, yeah, I feel like that's a it good thing. It should be though, like yeah. that both ways. Yeah. It is a good thing. I mean, but that there can be a competitive, it, it, okay, so the reason intentions is important and just communication is because like, you know, for the woman like me, who's like, I don't have to date someone who absolutely makes X amount or makes more than me or makes this and that. You, all of that is relative because it's like someone who makes less, you know, you would hope would be inspired. But yeah. if they're on that like hamster wheel of like, I'm tr I met this for three years and it's still not paying off. And then you just see me a year seven, year eight, just producing, producing, producing. It's like that can really make you feel some type of way. It can make you feel inadequate. It can make you feel like your way is failing or it's not working. And when whole time it's about to pop, but it's just, you know, this is your two or yeah. your three. So, you know, there's just a lot of components to it, but my goal is definitely not to attract an insecure man or make anybody ever feel insecure. So that's why I have to date intentionally and be with somebody who's very confident, no matter what, where they're at, really. You know, whether you have less than me, whether you have more than me, like... Are you cool dating with somebody that has less than you? 
Um, I I'm okay with that as long as they're willing Ambitions to. There. Yeah, and you got to be like not even. I'm not trying to say coachable. Like I have to be the one to coach you, but like you have to be willing to learn because the goal should be for you to be able to be a provider and yeah. make more than me. The goal is not for me to be the one carrying the weight. I'm willing to deal with somebody as long as their intention is to take on that leadership role in my life. So whether it's because you learn and take advice from me or you find someone who you can learn from, mm -hmm. but the level up has to come at yeah, some yeah. point. Cause like, yeah, I don't want to be the one running the show. Like Definitely. at all, yeah. <laughs> like at all, at all. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't, I'm over it. How do you, how do you feel like uh, having a partner or husband like, what does that add to your life? Everything. Like, that's just the only thing missing from my life right now. Because some people feel like, you know, like, why would why would someone in your position need a man if they got things? Oh no, so, I need so, a man. Lord Jesus. I so need so let's talk about that. So what? So what would a man? <laughs> what would a man? What would a husband? What would a partner provide to your life? Just more happiness. Like I didn't expect to have the things that I have right now and just be doing this shit alone. Mm. It's sad. It's really sad. I mean, I'm great. I got my kids and yada yada yada. Like they're always gonna be straight. You know, but like they can't. There's a there's something that they can't feel for me you know what I mean like they're babies they're little um like I want somebody that I can travel the world with someone that I can like reap the benefits of all my hard work with like somebody that makes it feel like it was it feels worth it now but it's just like I enjoyed that about my relationship a lot yeah. like just making memories traveling the world like shooting content from wherever making everything a tax right off and just enjoying life together growing together being on the same page and just understanding the mission and the goal and just like that shit was awesome. Like, there's nothing better than like having somebody that you love, that you can grow with, your, who is your best friend ultimately. And you just know like y'all's mission and y'all are on the same page and like nothing can break y'all. Like that level of just like, I don't know, there's no better feeling than that. And I've experienced it. Mm -hmm. Like I was with my best friend, you know what I'm saying? Like we were, we've been best, we were best friends for like 13 years. So that's my longest friend on the planet, you know? So I experienced what that felt like and just like how you feel like somebody got your back through no matter what. Like I could lose my business. I could, you know, a a anything can happen. I could lose my Instagram. I could get hacked. I could lose it all. I could, and I'm always going to have that person that is like down for me, you know? And they're down until they're not down. So you believe you like, can find that person? I don't know, because it, it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're not together no more. So that's the the toughest reality check of it all is that, like, you could put out the best energy, you could put out the best intentions. But like I said, people change, and then sometimes people don't change. And mm. both are can be bad things. Both can be good things, but both can be bad if there's not enough, you know, constant growth and communication. So... I definitely think it's, I know it's possible. I had it, but again, it's like, you have to make sure you're growing with someone who has the intention to not stop growing at a certain level. Sometimes, you know, you hit that six figure goal, maybe that's enough for you, but that was never enough for me. Mm -hmm. But you don't know to have those conversations. When you're broke, you're both just like, can we just get rich together? Yeah. What's rich? Rich might be a mil for you. It might be 20 mil for that person. Mm -hmm. And now like, you're like, no, I'm ready to chill and just, vibe out and the other person's like what we're just getting started out we're you can't no chill time and you're like what i made 100k I, this is the most money anybody my whole family's ever seen i'm good yeah. so it's just it's you never know you know how things are gonna evolve when those times come but um you know i believe that is possible for sure and it's the best feeling ever so, so i definitely don't want to settle it makes me think about life a little bit so on my flight i was flying to speak at this event uh, in New York, so it was maybe like two, three, like three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I was sitting next to this this, this um, older white woman, mm -hmm. and we was just talking out the gate, mm -hmm. and we found out there was a couple countries that we both visited, mm -hmm. so we sharing pictures and stories, whatever, and um, she she said she was married for like thirty years. She's I think she's in like late sixties or something. She married for thirty years. Husband passed away. Mm -hmm. She met someone new. Mm. Now she's married again oh. after like, I think maybe three or four years of being divorced. And she said the new experience I love completely different than the old experience. Whereas with the new guy, they do everything together. Mm. And, the, and the, the one that she spent, you know, had the kids with, spent 30 years with, he he never wanted to do stuff. He was all, mm. he had the routine, like you know, home, game, whatever, but mm. they never like did stuff together. Dang. He was more like, more reluctant to like want to do things with her mm -hmm. so the whole idea that nothing lasts forever mm -hmm. and that you could meet a different type of love mm -hmm. or maybe even I an like everlasting that. love okay. 
after you've experienced something. Yeah, and right? it could be totally different. Totally different. And still super enjoyable or exactly. whatever. But was she saying that she wasn't, was, like, did she feel satisfied in the first one? She said she said she was, she said she was satisfied, but she wasn't exposed happy today. with not being able to do things okay. together. So, she, so there was a little bit of lack there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because sure. he passed, mm -hmm. that, you know, because I guess they probably would have just rocked out. What a blessing. Right? She had the opportunity to meet the new guy. I'm and happy for And her. they just do things together I love all that the time, for her. Right? Yeah. So life, life kind of could throw you mysteries and it throw you different could. experiences. And I will say there's definitely big, big shoes to fill. Mm. Because if I, I, again, like I can always be exposed to something different yeah. and be like, oh my God, like fuck that old shit. This is what I, where is that? But in my mind, it's like I almost can't imagine anything better yeah, than this what is, I have. Yeah, I've seen it. I, I just haven't, it, yeah, yeah, I haven't experienced it yet. Granted, I know I can identify the negatives of where it went wrong. So I definitely can say it could be better. If I had everything I had, plus a few of those core traits in the person itself, because yeah. the experiences were lit and we were inseparable. Like we, it, it was a rare relationship where it's like, from morning, noon, and night for seven years, we were together inseparable and running a home-based business. So we intertwined it all and had kids. So it's like we grew into entrepreneurship, entre entrepreneurs together. We grew into parents together. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we just had a crazy backbone, which was our friendship. And um, the times were lit. Like we had very similar personalities. We loved to travel. Like we had very similar interest in that way. So it was like literally doing life with your best friend. But the d there were negatives of just like him as a person that didn't mesh with my needs. And that can always be better. So I yeah. think, you know, it's like a tough, cause it's like, damn, are you looking for perfection? Like they have to be exactly what you're looking for and offer the lifestyle that goes with it. It's a lot. It's definitely a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that's why it's important to know who you're, um, like seeking who yeah. you're what's the word like uh trying to court or trying to approach like you got to do a little bit of research like you got to know who you know what you're coming into mm. not every you can't approach every situation the same way no you can't um you really can't yeah i'll learn so I'll, i mean i've definitely learned situations um like that as well like you definitely can't approach a previous situation like you approach it. Well, you can't approach a new situation like You're you approach pretty, a previous situation. Yeah. yeah. And people do grow. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you also have to be okay with being vulnerable, mm -hmm. sharing with someone how you feel so you can mm -hmm. have that opportunity to go to the next level. Yeah. Because if you never do that... It has it, didn't stand a chance. Yeah. But I then you know. have to also be okay with if it don't go that way. Now your business out there. Yeah. You're on pillow talk with five niggas in the year. No, it's like all of those things like really play a role because it's like you want to be vulnerable you yeah. want to be honest but then it's like and sometimes the one that you want don't want you but you got to be okay with that because how, how because i guess what i'm saying is how can you approach someone to be to potentially be with him or her mm -hmm. if you don't put it out there it can go either way. Yeah. But for it to be successful you have to put it out there. Yeah. You have somebody got to say somebody got to Ah, I want this to be something. Yeah, and if it yeah. ain't, and if it's not gonna be that way, you also have to be okay be with okay walking with away. Yeah. Or yeah, no, I agree. That's yeah. a good. Point. And that could be tough too. Because I, I as a that. woman, yeah. men are gonna want you. It's yeah. just do they want you the way that you want them to yeah. want you? Like and men too. I mean, sometimes there's a there's a a woman that you want to be with. Mm -hmm. She don't want you like that. Yeah, or maybe like, she's not ready for you. Yeah, and you gotta be okay with you that, no good. matter how much you feel like she might fit in the equation. Mm. Cold world. No blanket. It's a lot. It's a lot. Dating is, I don't know. So how long would you consider yourself having, like, dating? How long have you been dating? Um, last time I was in a relationship was 2019. So it's been a little bit. So you're a pro dater at this point. I mean, yeah. Well, actually, I would say recently, I just started to date and with intention, like I'm open to it. Okay. I mean, I'm not out here going out, but I'm more like if I see someone, you know, yeah. being more intentional. So um, from a male's perspective, as far as dating goes, do you think that women should be dating one person at a time? No, I think when, I think you should date multiple people at one time. I don't think you should have sex with everybody though. That's okay. different. Okay. Because how am I supposed to get to know you and only you if you're not even serious about getting to know me? Like I might, I might, text you, call you, 
but you might not be giving me the same energy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I need to wait a month or two to find out if you're really into me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So okay. so I think people need to have some options open mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so you can weigh the options because if I like you, but you're not you're not throing me the energy. Yeah. Like how 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 long I'm supposed to say it? To like wave the flag, like yeah. yo, I'm interested in you. Yeah. Right. And then waste a month mm-hmm. when I could have been talking to a couple of other people mm-hmm. and seeing who really is Want, into, yeah. wants me or likes like me that. or or is interested at least seeing if Keep something's options, there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Keep options but, open. But I don't think you got to smash everything. I agree. That's different. I agree. Now when I fought, when I was younger, I was trying to smash everything <laughs> and see or not. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, you know what I mean? Yeah, but you know. I'm a little older. I'm like, my time is the most valuable thing, mm. right? Because I know how valuable I am as, yeah. as you know how valuable you are. So if I spend time, even even us spending time on this podcast, I'm grateful and appreciative of not only the path it took for us to be here, but like you being flexible, yeah. you know, all the all the uh, arrangements you had to make to be in Sydney. Shout out to her be having to be here too because you come with her. Yeah, right. Yeah. So her having to put a time together. So I appreciate that. Yeah. So now in the in the dating mindset, I'm like, I know how valuable I am. Just mm-hmm. like that, you know, just like let's say you are. Yep. So I'm like, OK, cool. Mm-hmm. For us to be here, it has to make sense. Yeah. So I don't want my time wasted. Exactly. So same thing with same thing. Same thing with dating. Though. That's what I mean. You know what I'm saying? It's like guys are tripping over cheesecake factory and coffee and not spending this and that. And it's like. I feel like we should all just be trying to put our best foot forward. We should all go to cheesecake. I love cheesecake, me yeah. personally. There's many yeah. options. I like options. Mm-hmm. You know, cheesecake is always a good time. I would definitely say that. Like you, it's it's, it's crazy out here. It's crazy you know? out here, but I do like the conversation that we started to go into, and I need more detail, whether it's on camera or off camera. But like, which yeah, one? Those those because com- I have a friend right now, like because yeah. you know I told you my little situation is really uh-huh. new, right? But my I have a homegirl who's straight out the gate, like she plays the old game, straight out yeah. the gate. She's just like. What we doing? What, not what we're doing as far as like, but if you're pursuing her on that level where you want to have sex, you want her time, you want her attention, you want to be like, not first week or whatever, but like if you coming in with any type of, she's like, well, what are you doing for me? And it's like, it's not wrong. Yeah. I get it because she's not trying to waste time either. If you're a guy that's like, yeah, I'm not trying to do nothing for you. Like, I'm not about to. Da-da-da. Well, she need to know that right away because mm-hmm. she's going to be like, bye, <laughs> you know. So I appreciate her sense of like being upfront about like, listen, I'm a single mom. I could use some help. I damn sure I'm not going to be running around in the streets with you, but struggling to pay my bills. Like, I got to be at home working. So yeah. if you're going to take me out of my work zone where I'm producing yep. for my household by myself, you have to be willing to be an asset to me in some way. And most men are very re- like repulsed and freaked out and whatever. But it's like, like you just said, time is money. No, facts, it is. And you're just, you just sat here and told me how much you appreciate me being here for an hour. Like just doing, doing what we're doing. So if we were on a date, as much as it's pleasurable and this and that, it's still valuable time. It's like we both get yeah. paid thousands of dollars yeah. by the hour. So it's like, definitely, you know, granted, you, there's a payoff with this and maybe there will or will not be with the person that you're on a date with. But it's like it's that mutual respect of yeah. understanding that like, yeah, me getting here and giving you my undivided attention and all these things consistently should come with some sort of effort on your part, like to want to contribute to making my life easier in some way, or yeah. at least getting to know how you can make it easier in some way. It can't just always be about a link up. Like it can't always yeah. just be about a fun time. Like I'm a grown ass woman with grown ass obligations and responsibilities. So if you're trying to really be a part of my life, we got to talk, we got to talk in some, we got to talk about some important things. Yeah. Nah. And I'm not, I, it's like, it's awkward. Cause I'm just, mm. I don't know, like those are uncomfortable conversations. You don't want to be perceived a certain way. You don't want to be perceived as like, oh, you know, well, no wonder she got what she got because she's out here asking men to pay this. And like, no, 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 it's not that. But at the same time, it's like, this is what I come with. And if you're trying to come into my world, you have to be prepared to assist in some way. So they're just uncomfortable conversations. I don't you know? even think they're uncomfortable. I think they're just they necessary. Are. They're, they're necessary. They're not, they're not, why they gotta be uncomfortable? They're just know. regular conversations. Because I feel like for a, the, the type of man that I'm looking for, but it's like, I don't know if that's even fair. The type of man you're looking for, would it you be uncomfortable? Have, it, it sh- you're right. It shouldn't be uncomfortable, but I just feel like a man should do what he's supposed to do and know to do it. Why okay. does a woman have to be like, I got something for you. I got something for you. you. So, so, okay, let's think about my situation. Right. So I didn't have a dad, no older brothers. 
I didn't have a mentor until I was probably in my 30s, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I grew up in a house of a number of women, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've been through multiple deaths, mm -hmm. traumas, you know what I'm saying? So I've been someone that's been seeking investing in my personal development, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. being being empathetic, intentional. being intentional, mm -hmm. doing the work, mm -hmm. reading, audio booking, mm -hmm. manifesting, vis you know, vision, all of that work. to work yeah. on becoming yeah. a better me. That's great. But if, and, and I became aware of the things that I'm aware of, mm -hmm. but a lot of men aren't aware of themselves nor aware of these, these tools mm -hmm. that they can use to grow. Yeah. So if I am someone that has a little bit of this stuff that I'm working through that I may not even know that is there. Yeah. I'm putting my best foot forward, yeah. but I may not know that my best isn't what you're expecting because maybe I'm just not self-aware yet. Right. And I'm not able to have a conversation with someone I'm truly interested in for her to tell me to look over here a little bit. Mm. How, where would I get that from? And okay, I don't want to, and I don't want to, and I don't want to ruin it with you. But Aww. if you don't let me know, how would I know? You have to let me know. Even if you're like, yo, Brendan, this is what it is. Like, we, we, we got, we can't rock for like a month. We just need a break. Mm -hmm. Like, these are the mm -hmm. things that are important to me. And, mm -hmm. you know, lovingly, you've been violating. So. <laughs> Like, go work on you. Like, you don't know say, who am I going to get from? Yeah, yeah, Especially yeah. if I can't, let's I say I can't even talk you. about you to my friends because they'd be like, bro, she's a, would you, like, you yeah, know what I mean? Because yeah, that's yeah. what a lot of us are in. Yeah, you're right. So if I'm not going to get it from you, who am I going to get it from? You're right. No, and you're like, Sydney, don't tell him. He, he got to figure it out. Fuck, uh, see. If she were here right now, she'd be like, told you. <laughs> Day one, let him know. What it, like, I'm just not, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just used to dealing with someone who, I, there's no wrong with that. I'm a, I was a yeah. fiance. Mm -hmm. I'm used to, we've had those, it, it's like we grew into that together. Yeah. So the needs were visible for both of us as they were happening in real time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I never yeah. had to have that conversation. Like, can you help with this? Cause it's like, we're in it together. Yeah. So it's just, off. I feel like, you know, you should, but like, you, that's a good perspective, you know, and that some people just don't. You Cause know, we all grow, you know what you know. We're, we come from different families, different backgrounds, different experiences, yeah. different, different lay of the lands, different parts of the country or the world. It's just the stigmas, I think that social media has put on certain well, topics, you know, right. submissiveness or gold diggers or women asking for this or expecting that men expecting this and expecting that it's like all of those topics have just been and so you just hear different perspectives and how they register to people and you're just like whoa like you just don't even want to say shit because it's like you don't want to be perceived I, at least i'm talking yeah, for myself because i know a lot of people they're like i don't give a fuck how i'm perceived i'm gonna let it know what and it's like i respect that too but me personally it's just like i'm not ever trying to come across as like a certain type of way. I don't want to rub nobody the wrong way. Like, I'm always trying to be mindful. Like, I don't want to make nobody feel no type of way. So you're nice. I'm nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm nice. There's not a lot but, of you out here. You're nice. I'm nice. <laughs> but I think I, I need to not be nice. I don't know. I just... Where are you going at? You a little bit... You say you got a little bit more guarded? Ah, uh, yeah. I'm a little bit more guarded for sure. But I just... Yeah. Like, my friends are just like, yeah, you'll... I, I'm willing to give that grace to people. Yeah. Because I understand the no father, the no this, no no mentor, like yeah. same with me, you know but what I'm saying? But black men, but black men is systematic though. Exactly. So you have to give us a little bit of- I do. You know? And then I end up in this position that I'm in, single mom of two, because I gave grace for yeah, longer yeah, than yeah. I was supposed to, you know what nah, I mean? Man, and that's, that's tough. It's so tough yeah. because everything, you know, I built my brand edifying a relationship. I catapult that whole existence we both walked away millionaires separately you know mm. and it's like we did what we were supposed to do everything you know we, i held down my best friend since the day he came home from prison like day one we were in a relationship day one we were like let's really rock this out and prove the world that we could do this shit you know and so to have that crumble after so many it's like damn this is not how it's supposed to go but it's an, this is what it, you know it's definitely we're in the right like we grew apart and seeing how things evolved it's like damn i see why god made me be such an independent woman in that relationship and yeah. why he kept me so focused on yeah you're in a position that a lot of women may not have been in or will may, will, will not be in mm -hmm. because your foundation is strong thank god yeah and sometimes when that happens like you get divorced or you break up whatever the case may be lose it all it yeah and it sucks because, like, you never think that your best friend or your life partner or whatever would ever, like, 
put you or leave you in a situation. You know what I'm saying? But like it, actions are completely different when someone loves you or wants you and is happy with you. Then when shit goes south, it's like all that goes out the window. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's why a lot of those important conversations about divorce, prenup, breakups, those need to be had. They need to be had. Um, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because like. They got to be happening. With, they they got to happen early when y'all feeling good. When you're feeling good. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, you know, I'm just, I'm glad I was always, I'm glad I was prepared. I'm glad that no matter how comfortable our situation was like financially, I'm glad that I never allowed myself to just kick my feet up and be like a kept woman. Like I always had the drive to be like, let me just make sure I'm staying on top of my growth, my development, make sure I always got my own tools, my own skill sets, just in case I got two kids. Like this is what I'm living for now. You know, anything can happen to him. Anything can happen to me. Like I gotta make sure I'm sharp at all times. And I didn't think it would pay off because we break up, but now that we're broken up, I'm like, yeah. God, because the day things, we ended things, literally, the day things were over, I just had to ask myself, like, what am I going to be, outside of, like, the heartache of it, like, problem solver, like, what, as you walk out the door, what role is leaving? I can't replace the father part for my kids, but, like, for me, what were you doing for this household that needs to be replaced? And that role got filled in 24 hours. Got to do what you got to do. Life has to go on, you know? So just had to figure out like, okay, where, what gaps need to be filled now so that my family structure can continue in as normal of a structure as possible, you know, whatever that's going to look like now. Like, how can I make this, how can I buffer this for my kids as much as possible, you know? So hired a chef, hired a housekeeper, hired a nanny, because I knew I was going to have to show up more as mm. that emotional. And I, I couldn't do it if I'm fucking Doing washing dishes, yeah. cooking. Yeah. 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 I think that's important. Yeah, yeah. That, That's and why. I, I, that's what I'm grateful for. Because yeah. if it wasn't for my business, I wouldn't be able to afford this badass payroll. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like, thank God I had the means to be like, because I couldn't. Like, I just couldn't do it all at that point. And the way the breakup was so ugly, it's like he left me in a situation that would have broken anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it didn't break you. It didn't. It yeah. didn't, thank God, because I had the financial means. Because it would have. It really, I hate to make it all about money, but I had just moved into a 5,000 square foot home with no furniture. And now a breakup where it's like, I, so many things that were just meant to like really cripple me. And like, it was all financial, like, you know, I had to furnish a house. That shit cost $50,000. Had to be done. Mm -hmm. You don't know no ifs, ands, or buts. Like, I could have dragged it out throughout the whole year, but then my kids would have been feeling awkward without bedroom set. Yeah. Without, I didn't want to, you know? So it's like a lot of things had to just pivot. And if money was a thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was needed. It was required. And when the breakup was at that phase, there was no talking. There was no communication. Like, it wasn't nothing healthy communication about it. He didn't give a fuck what my needs were. He didn't give a damn about how I felt about X, Y, and Z. It was just like, oh, well, figure it out. Nigga told me, go get a job. <laughs> he said, oh, it's too hard to do this, do that. Uh, go get a job. It's not my problem. Oh, a okay, cool. Now? You're gonna pay for all that. <laughs> so it made you. It just made you better. Yeah, of course yeah. it always does. Yeah. You know, but it's just you never think it. Things are gonna go south when you're on cloud nine in that relationship. It's easy to get really comfortable and, oh, you know, this is just amazing. This is the best ever. It's gonna last forever. You know what it is? Okay, th this is what I think, right? So, let's say I wanted to date you. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, right? If I didn't see you or if I didn't know you, mm -hmm. I start a conversation. My intention is to get to know you because I want to take you out. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But nowadays I feel like is, is different. Oh, it is. Guys right? don't want to court. So what Guys I'm saying is want... it might be, I feel like I need to talk to you more to get, to get to know more about you even before I know that if part. You That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Communication. Yeah. And yeah, I feel like a lot of people struggle with that part. And it's like, how do you even know if you like me? We haven't even talked about But that's about what it. I'm saying. You got to do that. Yeah, you're right. But also, I feel like there's expectations. There are. Right? There are. Because, okay, so what, so some of the expectations. No, this is a good, this Some of the good. expectations might be for, for a guy to even take me out, certain things need to be in accordance. You're so right, because I have these conversations with my homegirls often, yeah. and I do have the friends that are like, at that, 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 like, 
I, if you wrapping me up and I'm out at dinner with you, then yeah. I can't be at dinner with this one. So what you doing about that? But that's what and I'm saying. like, Damn, but how? Guys? But how can you even? You can't even get that in 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 such a short window. That's how I feel. You know, but you know, you're right? There's a lot of people that they're just like, you're not gonna waste my time, buddy. Like enough people have wasted my time. So if you like me. You got to really set yourself apart. And it's like, I don't really agree. I, I mean, I yeah. agree, but I don't. But that's like, not, I, yeah. It's not the measure of it. It's not. But the setting yourself, I mean, you can speak for your friends here that are not here. <laughs> the, setting, the, the setting yourself apart as a guy, maybe to them, and you let me know if I'm right or wrong. Does it, ha does it come with being more materialistic? Expressing yourself in a monetary fashion I think to, that to is what stand is. out? I think that, I mean, the answer is yes, <laughs> but I wouldn't say materialistic in the sense of like, oh, we need this and that. But when you're talking to a grown woman, right? And you kind of like, there's levels, right? Yeah, like, I agree with that. If you're going to come into the life of a single mother who has nannies, who has, you know, I say nannies because it's like hanging out with you is going to cost me. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. I have small children. You can't come around my, we can't have, we can't do that yet. Mm -hmm. So that little br coffee date you want to, you talking about taking me out on just cost me $150 because now I have to hire a nanny. So yeah. it's costing me money to hang out with you. But think about this. I agree with you, right? But if we don't know that, how would I know that it's costing you? <laughs> and if the guys that are mostly uh, mature enough, mm -hmm. he may be insulted by the mere fact that you, you know what I'm saying. It's like that's the that's the issue. But that that's we're what but that's what I'm saying. So, so, so the question to... needs to be, <laughs> I'm glad we're here, baby. Okay, so the question needs to be how to have that uncomfortable comfort because not every woman enjoys having that sit down. Like, all right, well, we've known each other for X minus ten minutes, and um, we got bills to pay. It's not really trying. We're not trying to come across well, that way. Yeah, and it's not like that's not the goal or the objective, but it's just like, damn, we want to know straight out the gate. Like, are you coming to add to our life in some way? But can you be, can, can men be like that? Can men be like what? Can, can, can a guy meet you with his intentions but during the first time that he meets he you? He wants sex right away. Yeah, but he's not telling you he wants sex right I'm away. Not. Most men are. Please. Just so they you're not like you, just because you're not a girl. Yeah, we I know. mean, we know what it is. No, we all know what we it know is. what it just is. Because you're trying to play, you know, yeah. the ice and wine and dine for 2.5 seconds doesn't mean that, you know, you're gonna deal with that shit for an extended period of time. Yeah, or you're gonna start dating other people to get that somewhere else while you, you know what I mean? Like, there's mm. always a catch running too. Because we want, if we like you, we don't want to know that you are holding off sexually with us, but you're still smashing five other people while yeah. you're getting to know us. It's like, we like, if we rock and we rock and we're trying to get, but there's expectations and there's things that need to be talked about. But when is too soon is the question. When is too soon to introduce that? Like, hey, hun, hey, babe, you know, what? We've, we've kicked it like yeah. three times a week for the past month. And like every time it's actually cost me a pretty way. Did you know that? Like, mm -hmm. it's just kind of, and then like you said, it can be, it can rub you the wrong way, but it's like you, social media is our catalog. When you hit yeah. me up, you see what it is. Mm -hmm. You see what it is. You see, I got kids. You see that they're little, like you may not know all of my needs, but if you're coming into my life, you know, I'm like, you know, there's, there's things going on. And so hopefully you're coming in with the intention of being an asset and not just you know, just here to be here. Like, I don't, nobody needs that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I need solution-based people in my life. I need people to come into my life who have goals of making my life better and vice versa. Like, I'm not trying to be a part of nobody else's life if I can't le leave it better in some way. You know what I mean? 100%. Or help you get to that whatever, next level or whatever. But yeah, so if, if, you're, if your intentions are to date without those expectations or without needing to have to do any of those things, then you just might need like a younger girl who doesn't really value that type of like partnership and help at that yeah. level. Cause they're young, they're why they, a good time is just like, you know, partying and having some drinks. That ain't, what the fuck? So you gotta know. Send me home with my kids drunk as hell, yeah. what the, that ain't. Nah, nah, it makes sense. That's so you gotta not. know, you gotta know where you are. And then obviously, like you said, with the levels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I think, I think you also right. Like mm. with, yeah, with, with, with uh, someone that's mature, you can have that conversation. Mm. You can be more, a little bit more direct with the communication, yeah. your attention, and what it would be like. Yeah. And you would respect that. You would I, like that. 
I would like, I'm big on intention. Yeah. Yes. Like being intentional. Like if you're just, if you just see me as a good time and nothing serious and you're not even, try, it's just, you're only attracted to me. It's like, I would prefer to know that mm -hmm. and then handle that accordingly. You know what I'm saying? Like, unfortunately that's not where my intentions are though. Like I'm looking for a husband. So I carry my, there's a way I carry myself and then there's a way I don't carry myself because I don't want to ever let that be misconstrued. Like I'm not out here 21 years old, like, oh, let's just go crazy. Like, no, I'm grown as hell. Like my life is stable and straight already. Like yeah. I'm only looking for someone who can help me maximize what I've already done. I want to talk about that too. We, we touched on a lot, relationships, mm. passive income, digital products, um, pre-nups, post-nups, <laughs> yeah. all of that. We got a new handshake. You oh know, God. practice with Sydney. We're gonna continue working. So on next that. time I see you, 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 it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be effortless. Right? Yeah. So um, is there anything that I guess you wanna learn for sure in 2024 that you didn't have time for? Like the new year, Ooh. something brand new. In 2024. you wanna add to your life, to your business. Yeah, real estate. I wanna get into real estate. So like capacity. on the investment side, I think, yeah, on the investment side, okay. definitely. Um, I also want more partnerships and collaborations in 2024. You want more partnerships and collaborations? Yeah, like I feel like I have done a lot by myself and like my team, yeah. but um, like I, I wanna do so much more, but I don't really care or have the capacity currently to just like take on more projects that yeah. I have to, figure out from the ground yeah. up and all that. I'd rather just collaborate with like-minded people who like have already have some success about themselves. And, you know, we can kind of come together and just see what our strengths are, see what we can, what motion we could create together. Um, I'm not really trying to like, from the ground up anything by myself. Those, yeah. It was fun, you know, I enjoy it. The challenge of like that, mm -hmm. you know, um, but right now, just because of all that's on my on my plate, I just think it'll be funner and more exciting for me to be able to connect with other people and um, create magic together, you know? No, I like that. Yeah. I, I agree. So for me, uh, and I say light would be like mergers and acquisitions. Like I'm into like buying businesses now. I like that. Yeah. I like Cause that. Cause they're already moving. So organisms are, they got system processes. There's people working there. They That's got, another one. You're right. CEO that, already. Yeah. yeah. You know? And I know some people that are in that, even in Vegas. And yeah. it's awesome. I'm like every day, every few days, it's like, yeah. So I'm an owner of this. I just bought it there. So I'm like, ah, yeah. Like you got a content studio, ice cream shop, a yeah. bakery. Like, and you can, and there's so do? many different ways that you can purchase them. Like you don't need your own money. It's kind of like real estate. Like you don't, you could do seller financing, you could do a leverage buyout and you could come in there like just on an equity play. Like for instance, let's say there's a- um, Hair salon. Okay, let's say there's a hair salon. Let's say they don't have no social media. Mm -hmm. They don't They don't really have fire lead generation. You know what I'm saying? And let's say they don't collect the data. Mm -hmm. So you can come in and say, hey, listen, I'll get a stake of equity. I'll, I'll um, you know, I'll make sure you got it. I'll put a subscription place, you know, uh, um, mm -hmm. in place, subscription option in place. I make sure you have all your data. I make sure that, you know, we have fire content on social media. I'll add in a YouTube channel, like whatever you're gonna add in. Yeah. And you'd be like, okay, you're currently making, let's say you're making 250, a quarter million uh -huh. a year. Mm -hmm. So anything that we make above a quarter million, I'm gonna take 20, I mean, let's say anywhere from 30 to 40%. Yeah, of, I like you know that. I mean? But now you're an equity owner. You know, maybe yeah. you, maybe you put in ten thousand, yeah, or maybe no money, but you're bringing in all these other assets. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like the coaching the business more or valuable. the consulting or something yeah. like that. Maybe bringing the digital product mm -hmm. part of it, and then any money they make over a quarter, mm -hmm. you guys have your, your split. split. I like that. Right, and then you could sell it back to them in a couple of years. You know, they I can like buy that. you. They can buy your position out. That's smart. You know, that's, so that, smart. that's what I'm working on. smarter. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like but I'm with you on a on a whole like working with network. others. Yeah, yeah. You know, especially in the podcast space. I mean, yeah. this is the major play of working with others. Hundred percent. You get to connect with like minded people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On your podcast, I would have never met you if it wasn't session. podcast. I know, right? Because I would have been like, yo, I would have been in DMs like. <laughs> The game he was. Uh, yo, what, yo, what are you, what are you doing? I'm just. Like, I'm gonna pull up. Who's in here? I'm pulling What's up. Password. Could we do coffee? <laughs> oh God! Like, right. You know, like that's not gonna work. So listen, cheat code, if you want to meet people, 
Yeah, just have a bargain. Bring some value. And then y'all can, y'all, you can at least do something with that. I agree. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree. 100%. Yeah. No, this is awesome. This is great. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to share with the people? 2024, everybody should be focused on multiple income streams for sure. Um, you know, if you have, I always tell everybody, like, if you only have one income stream, it's too close to none. Yeah. And that's a dangerous, you know, that's a dangerous reality for a lot of people. And I feel like, um, you know, a lot of people are suffering and struggling with a lot of financial stressors right now in today's economy. And it, a lot of it could be solved if they just had more income coming in. Um, and so learning about passive income streams is just a no brainer to me. Um, it allows you to free up your time, which is your most valuable asset, period. So being able to free up your time to live life the way you want to live life is such a blessing and it's attainable for everyone. It's just you need some education, you know, you just need to learn how to do it. You need to learn a different a way to create passive income. And so digital products is my big play for 2020, 2024. It's been my big play for the past five years. Um, so, yeah, I'm just out here trying to encourage people more than ever, especially now that I'm a single mom living the life of like the, the you know, yeah, it's like I'm so thankful for it. And as a mom, I see I love spending time with my kids. I love the freedom that comes with having success. And so I just I'm blessed to be on this side of it because most you know, single baby mamas don't, we, we uh, they out here struggling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the kid is a byproduct. It's just the trickle down effect is something serious when that's the reality of what we're dealing with. Single moms raising children by themselves and also struggling to put food on the table. What is that creating? Yeah, I, re I really love that message. And then it kind of goes back to what you said in the very beginning. And it's like everyone should have a digital product. Everyone. And being a single mom, um, you could still monetize without having to physically put labor, yes. time, out there with you yeah. spending, you know, cause you, you can spend eight hours making $20 an hour, which you're really only earning half of that. Or you could spend eight hours pushing the digital product and That's selling exactly. hundreds that of them, thousands of them in, yeah. a, in an hour or two, or, or in that same time frame. Using you, the, the time that you have to create content that gets you paid while you sleep. Yeah, like I amazing. incorporate my, my content works around my lifestyle, the things that I'm already doing, I just press record. I'm, I'm not an actress, I don't do anything extra. It's just the things that I'm already doing. If I'm with my kids, my kids is in the content that mm. day. If we're at Target, my content will be at Target that day. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. I don't adjust, it's just I press record and tie in my offer to what I'm already doing. I love that. And I that's love the that. best. Yeah, that's what know? I like doing too. Yeah. Cause, Cause I feel like people, feel like it has to be a certain way. I got to be in this background with no, this and this, and exactly. these lights and this camera. And yeah. this is, you're like, yo, no. we're going to Target. Kids is with me. This is life as a single mom yep. running a business. Mm -hmm. And I think that relatability and that transparency is why my audience rocks with me so tough. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that uh, that uh, podcast? series. Well, the podcast oh, yeah. too. Yeah. But the, the document, the million of the new product. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. excited for that. I'm going to have to do that too. Yeah, I mean, we. the reason I'm, I thought about it is because I just started it maybe less than 14 days ago. Mm -hmm. Our first week we did 10,800 and I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm encouraging people to jump in with me, but they don't even realize I just started this 24 hours ago. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like the first day we made like $3,400 and I'm like, damn, this is, it's, I knew it was real. Like, obviously I've been doing this, but it was a brand new offer, you know? So it's like, okay, cool. I like this. And then yeah. when my first purchaser was like hey i got my store up in 30 minutes and you know da, 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 made my two sales i was like oh this this is about to be amazing you know what i'm gonna do it you actually inspired me i'm gonna do it with this other product that i don't really promote anymore and the reason why i'm choosing this one is because i got a testimonial like two days ago and he made forty thousand off of it that's amazing you know what i'm saying that's amazing and What's he has a, he has a podcast so uh, the previous the, the previous the previous offer is teaching people how to monetize their podcast without brand deal sponsorships or having a large audience because that's mm -hmm. what they think they need. I love that. Like they feel like they need all big of YouTube things, of and I need sponsors and of course. I'm just doing a podcast so I can get sponsors. Like, yeah. Oh, nah. No. So right. I teach them how to monetize using. I, I, I feel like they're tradition, but uh, non traditional measures. Yeah, but they're just that. strategies that really work. 40K, is, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's an amazing mm -hmm. testimony. And I met him 
I met him in June. Yeah, met him in June. By yeah. August, he had like 34,000. And he just updated me like the other day. That's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's the well, one. Well, congratulations. Yeah. That's I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm learning with Chelsea. Hey. You, know? you ready? <laughs> You'd be learning from you. I mean, you ready? No, damn. We done this did it a couple times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> Listen, y'all, but another episode of the Auto Pursuit Podcast. That's to learn with Chelsea. Make sure you get a digital product this year. Please. No excuses. Sex. If you're a mom, dad, single parent, older person. Anybody. Anyone. Anybody. Even if you're in school. Middle school, elementary school, may have to do with your parents. Literally. High school, college. Let's go. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. 100% profit margins. Like, it's just all about working smarter. And where can I go to, to tap in with you? So you can follow me on social media. My handle is Learn with Chelsea. And if you're interested in learning about the passive income game, you can shoot me a message. Shoot me soft life. That's what we're coining this season. This new year is going to be our soft life year. You know, I'm all about still working, but it's about like effortless income. So if you're into that, if you're not into like getting your hands dirty and doing, you know, being Brenda the Builder and, you know, just laboring. I like it. Lisa the Laborer. If you're over those days and you're trying to just sit pretty and, and watch some racks come in, just DM me soft life so I could give you the passive income play of 2024. And we'll see you guys on another episode. This has been Spice. Bye.